So don't go anywhere as today I'm spawning frogs and rattling our opponents with hasty skeletons in what has to be one of my favourite decks that I've played with in a long time. Hey everyone, Hex here and today I have a Skeleton Frog Beatdown Brew in a highly synergistic Golgari enchantment deck that I just can't wait to show you. Firstly though, if you are new around here, please consider subscribing below so you don't miss out on future content, especially with Outlaws of Thunder Junction on the horizon. But onto this one first and as it's a very heavy enchantment build in Golgari, I get to use a card I've never used before, that is Tatsunari Toad Rider. This little Kamigawa gem is a 3 drop 3-3 three, three human ninja that if you don't have one already creates a legendary 3-3 three, three frog token when you cast an enchantment. This frog drains for one when you cast an enchantment as well. Also for 2 mana you can make your Toad Rider and frog unblockable by non-flyers or reach creatures until end of turn. The other theme on this deck revolves around skeleton creators from recent sets, namely Corpses of the Lost and Case of the Stash Skeleton. Both enchantments create skeletons as they ETB and both trigger your Toad Rider. You will see how well these cards work in our deck today, whether it's by returning the Corpses of the Lost to your hand when you descend on your turn, giving your skeletons haste and plus one plus oh, or by tutoring any card from your solved case to close out the game. Frogs and skeletons work in total harmony in this brew for us. Creature wise, I've got three that fully utilize our enchantments in various ways. Kami of Transience is amazing for its plus one counters and it just never seems to go away unless exiled. Generous Visitor is the perfect one drop for us for more plus one counters when enchantments are cast and we have some Elvish Archivists. These two drop elves draw you a card when an enchantment ETBs for the first time each turn. It is primarily for card draw for us today and they are just so fantastic in the games that I play. Other cheap enchantments to trigger our synergies include Hopeless Nightmare the ultimate one drop enchantment for us, and Akiba Reckon Raid. This saga drains for a couple of turns before ETBing as an enchantment rat creature with menace to start attacking with two. We have Life of Toshiro Umazawa, the best two drop on the play against low toughness creatures. It both destroys and stops your opponent from deploying one toughness creatures for the first couple of turns. It always helps see out games late on two by pumping up our menacing creatures. And I'm playing Clawing Torments. These are crucial cards for allowing us to attack through bigger creatures as they make them unable to block. You just gotta see how well this performs when we face off against a massive dinosaur later on. And today I'm also playing Witch's Vanity to take out some smaller threats. Finally, I have Fang of Shigeki as small creatures that no one ever seems to want to attack into and some audacities for extra oomph. Got 24 lands and that is our deck. So our curve is low, our synergy is high and I do very well in my games today on the ladder. The constant draining and life loss we do to our opponents is a lot for anyone to deal with. There are a ton of other options you could try. You could even add some hard removal if you like, or just be brave and not worry about it too much. I definitely want to hear your thoughts on this brew though in the comments below. Don't forget to drop a like, consider subscribing if you haven't, and I'll catch you again in the next video. All right, opening game here with our Skeleton Frog Golgari Enchantment Beatdown Brew opponent with a Bloodfell Caves. Our hand is pretty nice. We'll uh, see what they do as to what we do next turn. It is a Jadar for our opponent, which is the perfect card for our Life of Tashiro here. We'd like to play the Elvish Archivist first to draw a card, but I think the best thing to do here is just to use this and target the Jadar. This will also stop the opponent from wanting to play a one toughness creature this turn. And then next turn, we can go Archivist into the Akiba Reckoner Raid. Been having a load of fun in practice with this deck. It's pretty nice. Opponent with Felonious Rage there on their Decay token. All right, sweet little synergy there. As although, And he also gets a plus two plus oh and creates a two two detective. All right. They are gaming over there. We'll uh, minus one, minus one there, two, two though, because I'm going to go for the Archivist into Clawing Torment. Not a way I would normally want to use the Clawing Torment, but getting their creature off the board is pretty nice for us. And we get to draw a card, and it's Tekanuma. And they gain a life with their caves, sure. Exuberant Fusing, okay. So there's some kind of Rakdos Sacrifice deck up to some kind of uh, cheeky gameplays to pump up their creatures and to sacrifice their creatures and all sorts. So gotta be mindful that we could just be flung to death here with a Callous Cell Sword or a, a Cacophony Scamp, something like that. 
I think we'll just gum up the board a little bit though. Make it really hard for them to attack through us. And we'll start with our Tatsunari here. We'll play Fang of Shigeki, making a frog. And uh, say to the opponent, get through this board. I'm sure they can. They do only have three cards in their hand. Are they going for an attack? Okay, well, that is kind of suspicious and kind of nervy. So I'm definitely going to block both their creatures. Let's uh, get rid of our creatures that I don't care if they die. Okay, so what have they got? Can they kill us? That is the question. I'd love to take both their creatures out during their attack here, though. They are tapping manually, and it's blazing crescendo onto the fuse link. Fair enough. And it is monstrous rage onto the cell sword. All right, well, both their creatures die. We go down to seven. I mean, that was pretty nice for us, wasn't it? We have cleared the board, although they're on 22 life. We can start beating them down. And we can start with Corpses of the Lost here. Skeletons get plus one, plus zero, oh, and haste. And it makes a 2-2 two, two skeleton, which obviously is a 3-2 skeleton when it's on the board. I right, already played my land. So we will, I guess, just go for the Kami, maybe. And just uh, smash our opponent with our creatures here. They go down to 14. We are potentially on lethal next turn. They have a fuse link into the battlefield. I don't know what they can do here. I guess Brotherhood's End would be devastating. They don't have the second red mana, so any board white would have been pretty devastating for us there. But Corpses of the Lost here is going to make another skeleton with haste. Yeah, this has been an absolute beatdown by us. This is what our deck does. It kind of starts off as a controlly kind of deck and then builds up into this massive beatdown with skeletons and frogs and all sorts. Visitor here is a nice draw because that's going to make us able to play the Akiba Reckoner Raid here to pop a counter on something and we'll go for the Archivist so that can attack nicely. And I haven't done the math here but we're just going to hit a tackle, see where we stand. They've got two cards in their hand, three open mana. I'm not going to hold anything back. We can block with our visitor if we need to. We're just going to smash them. And hopefully this is lethal. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. They could have a couple of cut downs. Go for the throat maybe. Opponent GG's us. Yeah. And uh, they scoop it up. A very good win there against Rakdos. Okay. On the draw. And our hand is sweet here. No actual creatures, but we're going to create some along the way with some of our sagas here, so not going to complain or mulligan this hand. And we even get a turn one play in our Akiba Reckoner Raid to drain our opponent. There's a lot of like incremental life gain in our deck, which really does help. I really considered making this an Abzan deck to help with the life gain to um, leverage some of it, but just don't need it and I really am happy with this build, this Golgari build. These skeletons do a lot of work. Put it with the Celestis here. So um, not entirely sure what we're up against. A couple of Demolition Fields and a Rakdos land. So we'll just try and get aggro here. We'll play Life of Tishiro here and we can target our skeleton. Make it a 4-3 and attack our opponent who already goes down to 14 which we will follow up with Hopeless Nightmare. Drop him down to 12 and they'll have to discard a card. If they've got the Celestis in their hand, it kind of tells me slightly that they might be trying to ramp into something. That was burned down the house, gone into the graveyard. That's worrying, because they might have another one in their hand. Big score to discard Duress. Okay. They've got a lot of mana available. They might just pass the turn and next turn go for an Atali or a Breach. But they would be taking a lot of damage. It's Virtue of Persistent to gain some life back take care of our creature and uh, corpses off the lost is nice here as we get to attack our opponent for eight damage already they're down to six they have a decent amount of mana they're not going to want to play that virtue of persistence otherwise they will die so we'll see what happens here this is going to be close if we can get our damage through luckily our skeleton here has menace and if they do kill it, we can find something with our case of the Stash Skeleton when that's solved. 
So it's difficult to know which way this game is going to go. I do know that they've got a lot of mana here. Burn down the house to take care of all of our creatures. Fair enough. We find a corpses off the lost off the top. And we have our torment in our hands to deal with any opposing creatures. I don't think we can win the game just here. But we can certainly drop them down to just the two life. Okay, two cards in hand, two mana for our opponent, potentially down to the two life. They do have a go for the throw. Okay, they're hanging in there. Fortunately, we don't have a follow-up play. We do get to solve our case here, so that's nice. Now, if we solve our case and the enchantment goes to our graveyard, we also get the corpses of the lost back to our hand. Opponent with burned down the house and is coming at us with their devils. Um, well, we can just block one. I think they might have wanted to just hold that back. We've shown we've got a lot of haste in our deck. But I guess they need to try and get in some damage where they can. They are holding 1-1-1 one, one, one back. We do have Chlorine Torment and the Witch's Vanity. Attack and Numa. Okay. So I want to try and do some damage. Opponent is cardless. They can start gaining life back with the Celestis if they need to. So I think our best option here is to destroy this 1-1. We'll do it with the Witch's Vanity. We can get in there for 2 damage. We can just hold the Chlorine Torment for next turn when we can potentially win. And we can go tutoring in our deck with the case of the Staff Skeleton here. I'm trying to think what to look for. We could find a Corpses of the Lost, but I think the best thing to do would be to do some guaranteed damage to our opponent. So let's go for Hopeless Nightmare. This is two damage to our opponent. We could play it now, but they are they don't have any cards in their hand. Let's see if they draw a card and then they can, if they um, hold it back, bring these corpses of the lost back to our hand. So we can attack with those as well next turn. Opponent finds an Atali off the top. Okay, just a casual 7-7 seven, seven Dino off the top of their deck. That has got to be the best card for them to find in that situation. We do have Chlorine Torment though, which will make Atali um, unable to block. They find an Edict, which is annoying, as that is going to take care of our 2-3. Life of Tashiro as well for our opponent. Hopefully they just use the plus two ability on their Devil, which they don't. They gain some life, which is the correct thing to do. And this time they hold their 1-1 back. Probably the right call. So can we do 6 damage to our opponent this turn? Well, Chlorine Torment's nice because it is going to ping them in their upkeep. So they're definitely down to basically 5 mana here, 5 life. We'll play Corpses of the Lost. And uh, we'll attack our opponent with this. And we have 2 damage in our hand with Hopeless Nightmare. Hopefully the opponent uh, just takes this. No, they block, yeah. That was the right thing to do. They're going to kill our 3 1, fair enough. And let's just hold the Nightmare back again. They're going to gain 2 life back with Life of Tashiro. We have another Skeleton next turn, which will be a 4 2. And there's the Chlorine Torments triggered ability. So we need them to kind of brick a little bit. They're barely hanging in there. But we do have a hasty creature in our hand. Virtue of Persistence, that is a good thing to see. They might as well attack with Atali. Yeah, it doesn't block. We go down to 11. I'm pretty sure we've got Lethal here. Audacity, yeah, we didn't need Audacity. Because we can just play all Corpses are Lost here. This is going to make a 4-2. 4-2, uh, attack our opponent down to 3. Hopeless Nightmare and Chlorine Torment would have won. But Audacity does it anyway. And uh, we can just finish them off with the Nightmare. They would have died in their upkeep, but better to do it that way. That was lucky. That was close. All right, on the play. One tap land on the play is not good. If we weren't on the play, maybe I'd keep it. The rest of the hand's pretty nice, but we have to mulligan that. This one, I mean, it's keepable. It's better than the last hand, but it's still not ideal. We'll put an audacity to the bottom, play our Restless Cottage and say go. But we do need to find some creatures. 
as the law keeper for our opponent. I guess <laughs> Life of Tashiro here, taking care of their little mana dork. It's also going to stop them wanting to play another one this following turn. Yeah, Life of Tashiro, Tashiro is a pretty nice card early on against these kind of um, rampy decks that are looking to play little mana dorks early. We've kind of held them at bay. We can play Corpse of the Lost here and attack our opponent, who's down to 17. Yeah, not too much removal in our deck, but just enough, I feel, as Pugnacious Hammer Skull enters the fray. It's a 6 6, so not a card we can actually deal with at all. Gonna need to find a way to make it uh, not be able to block, but we do have Case the Stash Skeleton with the Corpse of the Lost on the battlefield, so this will have haste. And we can just put Audacity on it and uh, attack past the Hammer Skull as this also has Menace, as it's suspected. So a 5-1, opponent down to 12. How are they going to deal with our board here? Hopefully a little creature that we can witch is vanity, tap land for our opponent. And they don't do anything. Okay, well let's just... Uh, Go for the win, shall we? We can play Corpse of the Lost here, and I'm pretty sure that is that should be enough damage going through. It doesn't matter what they block because we're going to get 12 damage through. Opponent down to zero. Wow. Yeah, that was a skeleton beat down there. All right, on the draw. Pretty nice hand here as we have our Kami available in it. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a good one. Land situation, probably not ideal. We'll see what we draw. If we draw land, Takanuma. Yeah, we'll play um, We'll play Hopeless Nightmare. If not, I would have just played the Death Cap Glade, I think. But we'll play the Nightmare now. Get started on their life total here. And that is a bitter triumph in the graveyard, okay. Not a card I mind seeing down there. Avon Heartstabber. Not a card I have seen often played in standard. So what are they? Some kind of graveyard shenanigans deck? Doesn't matter too much right now. We're going to play Arkami. They did get rid of Bitter Triumph. Suggests to me they've got other removal in their hand. They are hovering our card. And it's go for the throat on our Kami. Sure. And they poke us down to 18. Okay, well, there's our Toad Rider. We'll play our corpses here. Attack our opponent. I think the haste on this makes this card extremely playable. Imagine it not having haste and this creature having to survive a whole turn. I think Corpses of the Lost has, is growing on me as a, as a uh, magic card. And Skeletons alone, maybe not quite so good, but with a build like this, I think it's just fantastic. So we can go Tatsunari into Akiba Reckoner Raid here, or we can just play our Case of the Stash Skeleton and smash our opponent. Let's go for the Case here. They didn't play a spell, so they've got something in their hands, whether it's a Wandering Emperor. Void Rend on our Corpses of the Lost, fair enough. That means our creature here does not have haste. But we will attack. And they go for blocks, okay. Okay, if they're blocking that, they might have some kind of mass removal spell. So let's go for Akiba Reckoner Raid now so we can get a creature as quick as possible from it. I guess that puts the Akami back into our hand. Forgot about that one. That is because the corpses of the lost left the battlefield. Another Heart Stabber for our opponent. Okay, they keep drawing these. And they are cycling away their Rafine's Tower. So we find a Hopeless Nightmare. Okay, they do have two cards in hand, but we get to nab one of those. All right, let's go for Tatsunari, Toad Rider. And Hopeless Nightmare here makes us a frog. And yeah, we'll just smash our opponent here. And we're very much a beatdown deck. I'm starting to realize that. Opponent down to nine, Heartstabber dies, Mills two, draws a card. Really not sure exactly what type of deck they are. Presumably they're trying to leverage their heart stabbers and have a very synergistic build, but 
Couple of Rafines in their graveyard. Surely they'd want them on the graveyard on the um, battlefield here. Soul Search. Okay, they're gonna take care of our Kami. Heart Stabber again. And that's life for Tishiro. All right, well, we can just give it minus one, minus one, and take uh, take it out and uh, attack with everyone else. Pretty sure they were gonna be very close. They were probably gonna go down to one. Had we not done this, so. Oh, opponent scoops it up anyway. They see the writing is on the wall. All right, on the play. Whew, a untapped land with a very good hand. Um, okay, I'm not going to advocate this normally, but I'm going to keep this one lander. We do have a creature, which is important. Pretty much any land is good for us now. Hopeless Nightmare, okay. Yeah, I do not advocate keeping one landers. I just feel like our hand is so good that when we do draw a land, then we should be okay. I say when, if we draw a land. We should draw one, shouldn't we, in the opening couple of turns. We're playing 24 in this deck, which is slightly lower than what I normally play. But we've already got the opponent down to 16, and they have Keisha the Stas Skeleton, so. We don't find a land, but it's another one drop. Sure. We can play a keyboard at Reckon Array here. Drain the opponent. Pop a counter on the visitor. And take them all the way down to 12. We're not going to win with one land, are we? They get in there with their skeleton here. And they are highlighting my visitor. Annihilating Glare to take care of that. Okay, well, we really need a land now. Okay, it's a bat. Sure. See what they want to take. So we probably take, yeah, they've taken our only creature there. All right, Forest, our best draw. We'll go for a life of Tashiro. Minus one, minus one on their deep cavern bat. Get our elvish archivist back. Just really want another land here for the corpses of the lost. Opponent with Shelly. Okay, that is a card we are going to very much struggle to deal with. So we need some very good draws here if we're going to find our way out of this. And Audacity really isn't it. I think we need to get a creature down. At least this time, if this survives, we can start drawing cards. I'm going to give you full permission to rib me in the comments about uh, this particular keep. I've kept one landers before and sort of lucked out. In hindsight, definitely should have mulliganed, but I still think our hand was pretty nice as an opening one lander. Chlorine Torment, I mean, that is a good card. That does mean that the Shelly can't block, but it's not a land. There's a land. All right. I think the life gain on Shelly here is a little bit annoying, though. We just kind of need them to brick a little bit here. And I guess we've got Audacity. And sure, we'll just blur. Uh, what are we going to put this on? Archivist. Attack our opponent. They'll probably block this, make us draw another card. Yep. All right. They're down to 10. We're down to 11. That is a Kami. And they are following up with an Obliterator. All right. I think this game's gone. Yeah, definitely should have mulliganed at first, but had we did draw, had we um, drawn lands on time, then I would be sitting here maybe saying that I'm glad I didn't mulligan. So who knows? That is a Magic the Gathering. We'll play our corpses of the Lost here and we'll just, uh, fingers crossed the opponent doesn't attack us. I guess we can get in there with the Nozumi Rogue Captain. Maybe the client will just have a little moment here. Maybe the opponent will forget to attack us. Who knows? No. They they get in there and we'll just uh, accept our fate there. And uh, we'll mark that one down as a learning experience. All right. On the play. Very nice opening hand for us. One thing I like about our deck is our curve is very low. I think all of our cards are under three mana, so um, yeah, I'm, we always normally have a decent opening hand. Opponent looks like they're mulliganing, which is good for us, and they do, down to five, and because of that, I'm going to jam Hopeless Nightmare. Normally would have gone for the Akiba Reckon Raid, but we might be able to uh, squeeze a cheeky little scoop here. 
His opponent has to discard down to four cards, and that is an Amalia in the graveyard. Okay. Probably shows they have another one in their hand, or they're missing black mana. But if we're up against life gain, I want to get the job done as quick as possible. So we'll go for Akiba at Reckon Raid here. There are so many sagas and enchantments in standard at the minute that there are so many other options you can put in this deck if you want to. You could even take out some of the rares and go for a more budget style build. I did experiment without green, but I do feel that Generous Visitor and the Kami are pretty essential in this deck. You could probably not have the Elvish Archivist, but there isn't really many uh, creatures that benefit from enchantments entering the battlefield outside of green. So, by all means, go mono black or black white if you want to, but I think the green one is the best. Put him with Lord Skitter, that is a card that we're not going to be able to deal with with our um, deck. We don't have a way to just straight up kill it. We can make it so they can't block, or we can just attack around it. We have a fair bit of menace in our hand in our deck. So let's go for the Life of Toshiro here. We can pump up our 2-1. Attack past the rat here. And uh, take the opponent down to 11. We can do the same next turn and also we can be attacking with our Nozumi Road Captain. So that's a rat isn't it? So we can attack them with our own rat. Yeah they scoop it up. They see the writing on the walls pretty early. 